So now we're going to be going in um, to a different file and kind of experimenting and playing around with um, changing the path of motion. Um, so let's go back into our course shell um, and then download this motion path file. Um, so we'll go into Brightspace week 15, I believe, push download. That goes into my downloads folder. So I'll just go into animate now and just do a file open. Um, go into my downloads folder to find that 03 motion path file and then we'll just open that up. So this file contains a single tween layer uh, with a rocket ship moving from the top left of the stage uh, towards the bottom right and ending up kind of in the middle here. Um, so we can move the path of motion so that the relative movement of the rocket ship remains the same, but is starting and ending at um, different positions. So select the selection tool from the tools palette. So if you hover over stuff, usually it will, oh, I'm still on this. So if we hover over this, you can see it'll tell us this is the selection tool. So if we select that, um, click on the path of motion to select it. Um, and then it will become highlighted and then just drag the path to move it to a different place on the stage. So I moved it over slightly. Um, so the relative motion and timing of the animation will remain the same, but the starting and ending positions are uh, relocated this way. Um, so we can move it around wherever we want it to be by getting that selection tool, clicking on that path of motion and moving it. Um, we can also manipulate the path of the object's motion using the free transform tool. Um, so let's select the path of motion, get that selected, make sure it's selected, highlighted, um, and then select the free transform tool, which is pretty similar to some of the other Adobe products. Um, and then transformation handles will kind of appear around that path of motion. And then we can scale or rotate the path as desired. Um, so maybe I'll just rotate it. So to get that rotation, you have to go to like the corner and, and, and kind of hover until you get this little uh, circle-y arrow icon, and then you can start to move it and rotate it. Um, so I was able to kind of rotate it a little bit there. Um, and you can make it smaller or larger uh, as well. So, I mean, I can make it longer or steeper, rotate it a little bit more. Um, so, yeah, you can do that with the free transform tool. And as you can see, the path here is straight, but we can actually make this path curved, too, if we want to. Um, you can edit the path with the Bezier Precision um, with Bezier precision using the anchor point handles, or you can edit the path in a more intuitive manner with the selection tool. Um, so we're going to try converting the anchor point tool, um, which is hidden in the additional uh, tear off tools at the bottom of the tool toolbar. So we'll have to go down here and click on this and then find right here. Um, this is the convert anchor point tool, which we're going to be using to change that into a curved path. Um, so we'll select this. Um, do I have that selected? I guess I'll just have to add it to the toolbar and then select it. So you just click on it and drag it into the toolbar and then, then you can seem to, then, it, then, it, then you're able to select it. Um, drag from the starting point and the ending point of the motion path on the stage to pull handles out from each acre point. So I guess we'll just start at the end here and then we can add, and then you have to hold down. You have to hold down the whole time. I'm holding down on my trackpad and I'm just changing this to a curve. It, it, and then when you let up, it'll actually pop into place. Um, and so now we have a curved path.
And then um, we're going to select the sub selection tool, which is actually be be beneath the selection tool in the tools palette. So we have to click and hold um, the selection tool, click and hold that down. And then here's the sub selection. Uh, it's the white arrow tool. Arrow tool. Um, so drag the handles at either of the end of the path. Um, so if we click on it, you know, you can get handles. For some reason this one is not having handles on both ends, but you can actually grab these handles and change the curvature with the sub selection tool as well. Once you um, end up using the uh, convert anchor point tool. So maybe I want it to be like that. So if we scrub through and look at this, um, we can see that the rocket ship's nose is just kind of staying forward facing and not really following the curvature of the path um, like we'd like it to. We'd actually like that nose to point down and follow the curve of the path. Um, right now it's just the, the nose is really just staying um, at kind of a perpendicular or well 90, degree, 90 degrees or whatever you want to call that. Um, so we can actually change that. Um, so if we select the motion tween on the timeline, I think if we just uh, click, click here maybe. Um, shift click to select the whole tween. So shift click to select the whole tween. I think I have that right. And the properties panel. So we'll go to the properties panel. Um, under tweening selection, Um, select the orient to path option. Um, so I think we do it right here. Orient to path. So check that. Um, animate inserts keyframes for rotation along the motion tween to orient the nose of the rocket ship to the path of the motion which actually this looks a little weird, but it might be because my path is a little bit strange. It's not quite the same as the, what the book had. I could potentially change this. So let's see. Hmm. It might be because I rotated it too. I'm not quite sure why that's not working. I think it's probably because I rotated it so much with the free transform tool. So if I just grab that and kind of move it up like that, I think that will fix it. Yeah. So there we go. Now that nose is really following the path that we created. So I'm going to go back to my selection tool, kind of deselect by clicking into this and then reselect this. Um, or maybe I'll just do a shift click here to just to make sure and then you can actually replace objects with different objects so maybe I want to alien here so I can actually go into the library panel and within this there is um, movie clip symbol of the alien so I think it's this one and it I think this is the movie clip symbol right here so I think I can just go ahead and drag it over the top of this um, do you wish to replace the tween object, target object? Push OK. So now we've just kind of replaced that um, rocket ship with the alien. And then if we take the playhead and kind of scrub through, um, he should follow pretty closely. Um, so it's pretty easy to just replace um, things that you've animated with different files. So at this point, the book kind of goes over creating nested animations. Um, so oftentimes an object that is on the stage will have its own internal animation. For example, if we had a butterfly moving across the stage, um, its wings would be flapping. Um, or the alien that we swapped out with the rocket ship might be waving his arms. And these kinds of animations are called nested animations because they are contained inside the movie clip symbols. Um, and are independent of this main tem timeline. Um, so in this, we're gonna actually take the alien here that we brought in and create um, an independent movement so that he can wave. So we'll make him wave. 
um, and then we'll bring him in. And so as he flies across the stage, he will be waving. So in order to do that, we need to go to the library, go back to that alien um, movie clip, and then we just need to double click on that. Oops. Not on the name, but on the actual um, little icon next to the name. And so now we're kind of in the symbol editing mode uh, for this alien movie clip symbol. Um, so the alien's in the middle of the stage. Um, in, the, in the timeline, the parts of the alien are separated into layers. So we have um, the feet, the head. I can turn off the eyeballs to show you kind of what, what consists what. Here's the body, and then arm one. And so the, the arms are separate, arm two. Okay, so we're going to actually get the selection tool, and we're going to get his left arm, or our, uh, let's see, so selection tool, I've got that selected, which is actually arm one, um, in the layers panel. And we're going to do create motion tween, which is right here, the little button here, when we have that arm one selected, that layer selected. And it will auto automatically um, convert the layer into a tween layer, and then it'll insert one second worth of frames automatically, so we can start to animate the instance. Um, so select the free transform tool right here, and then we're just going to move that hand um, up about like that, I'd say. Um, and when we let up, uh, a keyframe will be inserted at the end of this motion tween. So you can see that little dot there. So the left arm should rotate. If we move this, it should be rotating fairly smoothly, which is awesome. So definitely remember um, to move the playhead back to frame one. So I'm on frame one again, and we're going to actually do the same thing to arm two. So create motion tween button. You know, make sure we're on the free transform tool. We'll, we'll kind of grab it from this corner and rotate it about like that. Um, and then it'll automatically insert that keyframe. And so I think if we move this around, we should see that he is moving both arms. So as you can see, when we scrub through, um, his arms are moving, but the rest of his body disappears. So we need to select the body, the head, the feet layers, um, and take them to, I'm going to zoom in on the timeline a little bit, um, to the, so I think if we, uh, wait, okay, if I, if I click on the feet one, and then push shift, and then just click, click on all of these, I think we can do an insert timeline frame. We're not doing keyframes, I think we're just doing um, insert frames. So that should bring frames all the way to the, those frames all the way to the end. And if we scrub through the time, um, timeline with the playhead, we can see that he's present the whole time now with his arms flapping. So we're supposed to select um, or click the scene one button in the edit bar at the top of the stage to exit, to exit symbol editing mode. Um, I don't know where that is, honestly. But let's just do a file save, maybe, um, just to save the work that we've done. So let's do preview the let's let's preview the animation by choosing Control Test. There he goes. He kind of flies off the. In this test window, he's flying off, getting cut off there, but hopefully that doesn't actually happen. So we can close this now um, by clicking here. And it's saved, so should be able to just click out of that. Oops. Crap. 